here in this room is a will. Chariots of the Gods, the international bestseller by Eric Von Dänigen that shattered conventional theories about history and archaeology. Now, Sun International brings it to the screen in a startling new film. Chariots of the Gods explores Von Dänigen's controversial and explosive theory that beings from other galaxies visited Earth in ancient times. Did a genius from another world design the pyramids? Is there evidence of a prehistoric airfield in the Andes? And what about the giant stone faces that brood over Easter Island? All over the earth, the evidence is there. For an intriguing, fascinating, mind-opening experience, see Chariots of the Gods, rated G. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault podcast. I'm your host, R.J. McCready, and for this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the book that came out in the 60s called The Chariots of the Gods. And what's interesting about this book and the topic of this conversation today is how uh, one book can change our perspective on how we see things in the world, especially our ancient civilizations. And uh, the object of today's episode is to basically uh, talk a little bit about that book and the guy who put that book together. Because um, I, I've been aware, I've been aware of this writing and the effect that it has had, uh, especially with uh, movies and histories and how scientists have tried to ta- tackle this subject of the ancient astronaut theory. Um, but I, I, I wasn't really, I didn't really know an awful lot about the writer, which is uh, Eric von Daniken, um, and how he kind of had the had the platform to be able to put this book out and say, look, this is this is my, this is what I think. And as I said before, guys, with with the mystery world, um, I think once you've had that seed planted in your head, it kind of makes you wonder. And whether you whether you believe this theory or not. Um, what I've noticed, and again, I'm not I'm not saying whether this is right or wrong, but I, I do believe that this just this one book has kind of had an effect on how how we have looked at the ancient civilizations and certainly the way uh, it is now tackled today, especially by I'd say like Hollywood and movies. And the book also branches out to subjects which I've just spoken about in my last episode with the crystal skull and all the mysteries surrounding that from the ancient times. So there's there's quite a lot of avenues you, you can actually go down with this book. But what I'm going to do today is I will just touch a little bit on on those avenues. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about Von Daniken himself and the how this book, book was published. So this is going to be like a... I won't, I won't do it as a part one episode, but it will certainly be a, a platform to future episodes i'm gonna do and then i'll go back to talking about this episode as well so um let's do a quick little synopsis of the chariots of god so it was a book written in 1968 by eric von daniken uh it's translated by michael heron because it was originally written in german which i'll get into in a minute and it hypothesizes that the ancient technologies religion and civilizations were given to them by ancient astronauts who were welcomed as gods at that time. So before I actually talk about the contents of the book, let's talk about Eric von Daniken, because I think this is quite important, because um, I actually don't really know a lot about this guy. I've seen him a lot on the History Channel with um, ancient aliens, and he's done, done a lot of interviews, and he's come up with all these ideas. But I think to... You know, me guys, as I always say, usually rewind the clock. Let's rewind the clock on this guy. So he was uh, born in Switzerland in 1935. He attended a Catholic school, but he rejected the church's theories about the Bible and its interpretations. So at a young age, he had this idea in his head of um, what he thought that, that might be, which is interesting back in 1935 because you would 
possibly have limit to a uh, limit to uh, information that we have today for the the internet and stuff like that. So at an early age, he's 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 got this idea in his head, which which I find interesting. Um, he developed a, an interest in the astronomy and UFOs, and he left the school and went into the hotel business and spent a little bit of time in Egypt. And whilst in Egypt, he got involved in a jewellery deal that went wrong and it resulted in a nine-month conviction for fraud. Um, after his release, he came back to Switzerland, uh, got back into the whole in hotel industry. And whilst he was working in this industry, this is where he wrote The Chariots of the Gods. And he, got, he tried to get published uh, by several publishers. It got turned down uh, many times. And to, up until 1967, where he went to a company called Earl Stein Verlag, which is a German publisher, and apparently one of the biggest publishers out in Germany at that time. And they obviously wrote the book in German, uh, it got released, and it was an unexpected success. It did really well, and, it's, and again, it started to get people uh, thinking about uh, von Daniken's theories about the ancient national uh, theory that he was expressing. But then he got back involved with some uh, fraud cases. He he um, got arrested for falsifying uh, hotel records. So he was actually getting involved in quite a bit of crime along the way. Uh, he was actually using uh, the money from the hotels for foreign travel to research his books and this was over a 12 year period so whilst he was in the hotel industry he was uh, taking a bit of money a total of $130,000 um, something that he pleaded not guilty to because he was basically claiming a fault of credit through the institution so I think what he was saying was he was taking the money and he was recording it and as, a, as a credit and he had the intentions to pay it back. Um, he got also got accused of uh, living this playboy lifestyle whilst he's going around the world and he's uh, trying to research his book. And then in 1970, he was sentenced to three and a half years in prison um, with the fraud case. And he also wrote his second book, or his second novel, The Gods from Outer Space, whilst he was in prison. So when he was eventually released from prison because of the success of the chariots of the gods it was making a lot of money um he actually used that money to actually pay off his his debts and the hundred and thirty thousand dollars i presume uh to put himself back on track but what what i find interesting is why i thought it's, it's good to bring this uh, subject i never knew anything about this about this book i just thought von daniken was just a guy that wrote a novel but the actual building platform of this book is you know, he's having a little bit of a sort of rock and roll type lifestyle, you know, getting involved with, you know, dodgy jewellery deals, frauds and embezzlements and all, all sorts of things. And, you know, spending time in jail and writing his novel in jail and all this sort of stuff. Never knew about it. Never knew about it at all, like I say. But um, that is the building platform of the Chariots of the Gods. Now, although this book was a success, it has up till today sold more than 70 million copies worldwide and is published in uh, 40 different languages around the world and I'm sure when you talk about this book it's something that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, his actual ideas which I still haven't touched on yet which I will get into in a minute um, have been either debunked by scientists or scientists uh, historians won't get involved with it um, they will have a look at it um, but they don't necessarily jump on board with him with these theories uh, virtually rejected by uh, as I said all scientists and academics so the term that's often used with scientists and academics with von Daniken is that he uses uh, pseudoscience um, to either distort or mis misrepresent history and it's a type of uh, crypto history I suppose you could say where you have um, ancient superstitions and the, the occult, which kind of has a conflict with science and religion. And um, I think what scientists are trying to say here is that he, von Daniken, is using these these 
these histories and these civilizations with, and he's adding like a type of fantasy ingredient to it. Um, but at the same time, uh, whether you believe it or not, it is quite a fascinating story on the, on this occasion, um, which does get you thinking, and I think that's why there's such a success um, on this publication and the reason why we're still talking about it today. And as I've mentioned before on the show, you've, it's also come out at a time where people are starting to believe in the mysteries or it's becoming quite popular, like in the you know late 60s, early 70s, um, as I've mentioned before with the Arthur C. Clarke, the uh, coffee table books, um, people are starting to talk about UFOs and, and the Loch Ness Monster. So I think Von Daniken's book, looking at this, I think it, he probably very cleverly released it at the, at the right time um, because people are beginning to you know, believe in a little bit of, or they like a little bit of Hocus Pocus. Um, so I think the timing of the release of this novel, I believe, is probably the key to its success. So let's have a look at the uh, contents of this book. So, Von Dunnigan claims that the ancient civilization technologies appear to be more sophisticated than they um, were at the time. And he believes that they were visited by extraterrestrials, also known as ancient astronauts, to help them assist with the building of the uh, Egyptian pyramids, um, Stonehenge, Easter Island, the Nazca Lines. And it does get you, you know, as I said, it does get you thinking because today um, these are subjects which I could probably do separate episodes on with the pyramids and Stonehenge, uh, which I probably will do later on, so I'll just sort of touch on it now. But um, I think what's interesting with this book, and I've mentioned that word quite a few times on this episode, but um, is even though scientists do you know, debunk this, these theories and academics and I understand why they do because unless they have solid evidence to say this is this is what's happening. When you when you actually look at this book, it does make you scratch your head and just wonder and that's my perspective. I think yeah, it's a bit strange, isn't it? Because today we still don't know how um the pyramids were built, just to say. It is a conversation that gets brought up sometimes. Um you know, if you're having a barbecue with friends or whatever, you just happen to have this topic of conversation. You know, hey, how... so how do you think the pyramids were built? And today, scientists are still baffled by that. And uh, Stonehenge, same thing. Um, they still can't work out how that was built. Uh, the Nazca lines, that seems a bit strange because it's only something that was built in ancient times, but you can only see it from an aerial perspective. So you... The question is, you know, what were the ancients trying to tell? You know, what were they trying to say? And this theory also branches around the world with other ancient civilizations in India, in, in China, even in Norway with the Norse gods Thor, you know, saying that, you know, the hammer of Thor comes from outer space, um, interpretations of the Bible, um, saying that the angels are possibly angelic uh, ex extraterrestrials uh, the the Ark of the Covenant is it a device to not only just talk to God or is it to talk to ex actual ex extraterrestrials so these are the avenues that um, Von Daniken is, is, is going down in question and it has also left a legacy um, or a group of people who today still believe in this who uh, call themselves ancient astronaut theorists and there's a tv show on i think it's on the history channel called ancient aliens which i think is a great show some of their theories are great um so, some of the places that they visit around the world are, are fantastic and i think they're up to season 18 now or something like that and they really do dig into this subject and you know some episodes they might be talking about say like the dragon which is an interesting theory. Was it a was it a mythical beast? Something today they still haven't found any remains on remains of, but it is actually in you know old old ancient texts where people believe that these dragons were flying around. So um, some people would believe that that was a mythical beast that existed, but an ancient astronaut theorist would possibly come out and say, hey, that could have been a, a 
a flying saucer or spacecraft because uh, uh, is it an interpretation of an ancient civilization saying well it looks like some sort of flying mythical beast with fire coming out the back but could it have been a craft of some type so I think that's the way that the ancient astronaut theorists would try and interpret that just to give you some idea but whether you believe this or not and I think it is a it's a great subject to talk about regardless um, there, there's a there's a way you can look at this which um, I, I found this on during my, my research which is what Von Daniken was just trying to explain how if we were visited say we were visited by aliens and the, the, an advanced race would we treat them like gods which is um, something that he was putting onto the table but what he used here was there was a there was an occasion in World War two where in the Pacific the Americans and the Japanese were landing I think on the Polynesian islands and they came across um, tribes of you know native people who were still you know living a very primitive life still hunting gathering and these people saw the the Americans and the Japanese who would have been obviously in their their navy uniforms with planes as god godlike people and the interesting thing that happened is that when the Americans and the Japanese left these islands the actual um, native people were trying to mimic the Americans and Japanese by creating uh, landing sites and they were making aircraft out of bamboo and straw um, to to try and draw them back. They basically, you know, treated the American and Japanese Navy guys like gods, uh, which is interesting how they that they had that reaction at that time. And I think that's what Von Daniken was saying that if the ancient people were visited by say advanced aliens helping them with with technologies then would this be the reaction and what what's left behind for us to find today in the in in the ancient cities and structures and the pyramids and the uh, hieroglyphs and the nazca lines and all that is that is that a is that the interpretations from the ancient civilizations them trying to tell tell us what, what's happened in the past so again it does get you thinking and um, I'm just sort of touching the the surface on on this as well so there are some things that I'll probably uh, get into independently with um, future episodes um, what I will mention as well is there are, has, has been some cases where archaeologists have scratched their head with um, some findings around the world they've I think they found um, what they believe to be ancient batteries technology that they shouldn't have been having um, I think that might have been in Iraq, um, ancient Mesopotamia, somewhere like that. Um, they also found what they believe to be a ancient computer which uh, was found on the wreckage of a ship in the Mediterranean Sea amongst um, other ancient artifacts from that time in Greece. And at the time they, they dismissed it and then when they put it together they thought, hang on a second, this is like a, a device which is telling us about the I think it turned out to be like the the orbit of the the moon and the sun and several other planets in our solar system and they're, they're saying how did they know about this technology so even though scientists and archaeologists have ruled this out there is there are some artifacts that have turned up around the world where they are actually saying well how come they had this back in in those times so it, do, it does get you thinking um, the other thing that I found here as well, which is quite interesting, was that Von Daniken was also criticised with, with this book as well. So I also had some criticisms from taking the ideas from other um, authors, one of them being the writer H.P. Lovecraft, the horror writer. And um, some academics have come out and said his, his writing is very similar to the uh, the book, The Call of... Uh, I think it's called Syphilu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bear with me there, guys, with my pronunciations. And another book called At the Mountains of Madness, which was written in the 1920s. And even though these are these are horror novels, these are basically telling stories of 
Uh, what I understand is like the old gods of the earth that, that may re return one day. So I think people are saying that is, is Von Daniken trying to sort of bring those stories to um, history with, again, the ancient civilizations. And there's a, been a few occasions where he he has come out and said, I thought that may have had something to do with the ancient astronauts, but in this case, I think I'm wrong. So he's, he, he's come out and said he's, he's been wrong about some theories on some occasions. And there is a line that he's come out and said, I've, I found this as well, it's like we, it's, a, it's a quote where he says, I'm not saying it, it is aliens, but it might be aliens, and I think that was something that was picked up in the actual book, The Chariots of Gods, from from reviews. But regardless of whether this is this is true or not, I do find this a fascinating subject, and it does deserve its place in the mystery world as such. And I think it is a is a good topic of conversation because it does does get you thinking. And some of these theories, when you look at it, you look at some of these ancient structures. And there's a few around the world which I've seen on the, because I've watched the Ancient Aliens uh, TV documentary. And um, first of all, some of the places I go to are, are, are beautiful. Um, and you do look at these ancient structures that are built on top of mountains. You think, well, how did they build that back at that time? And as I mentioned, you know, with, with Stonehenge, they're still trying to work out how that was built um, to this day, just as an example. Um, but regardless of all that, this this has left a, a lasting legacy. Um, there was also a movie made of the Chariots of the Gods in 1970s, which was a success, and it also got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Documentary. And talking about films, uh, this book has branched out into the movie world, um, as as you guys will know. Um, films like Star Trek. Um, Stargate, I mean, that was a little bit of a game changer. I remember when that came out and he was saying that the the Egyptian pyramids were like a platform for um, spaceships and um, they were basically touching on Von Daniken's theory saying that, you know, the, the gods in that movie were aliens. It's a good film. It's, it's, a, it's a good film with uh, Kurt Russell in it. Who's <laughs> who I'm a fan of and talking about Kurt Russell, I'd I couldn't get away with this. Uh, it also influenced the horror movie from 1982, The Thing. Uh, there's a reference in there. It's a great reference by one of the characters called Palmer when they're trying to work out where this alien spaceship has crashed and Palmer comes out and goes, Charles, Charles, chariot of the guards, man. They practically own South America. I had to get that quote in there, guys. So any of you who know me as a film fan will understand that. Uh, it's also brought up in uh, the popular TV show The X Files, um, the, the Tintin novels, um, Alien, Prometheus. They touch on that. They, they go to some ancient cave drawings in that movie where it takes them to uh, a distant place in the universe. And obviously, Indiana Jones. I think, uh, obviously, with the Ark of the Covenant that I spoke about earlier. And obviously the last instalment with the Crystal Skull. And obviously that touched on the episode that I spoke about last time. So yes, it has left a a, a legacy, a, bit, a, a big one of that. Um, so it's, it, it certainly gets you thinking that, you know, it's, you know, with, whether you believe it or not, it touches into all different places, religions, you know, science. Uh, even construction and to close this uh, episode off today I mean I'll give you my thoughts on it and I'll put that card on the table I honestly don't think that we are alone in this universe I think there's got to be something else out there whether we have been visited in the past or not I think Chariots of the God is a is is a theory it's, it's not a proven theory I appreciate that I appreciate it's been debunked by scientists but at the same time I don't think scientists can prove it's it's true or not true at the same time which kind of baffles your mind and then you can bring in a little bit of um, I think I mentioned Albert Einstein with the uh, Philadelphia experiment um, some of his theories as well certainly um, with the space exploration I think he had a theory where if you travelled so far to a distant star 
Um, it would take you 20 minutes to get there your time, but then if you came back to Earth, um, it would be like zip. Earth would have gone forward like 100, not 1,000 years. So a little food for thought was to say if we were visited, the, the aliens have gone back to their place, it's taken them 20 minutes, and then maybe one day they might come back. Who knows? Just leave you that thought. It's one one to think about. But um, there you go. If if nothing else, it it's a good read. It's a bit hocus pocus. It gets you thinking. I've had some fantastic conversations to, to people about this, and also not to forget there that there are some incredible structures around the world, um, which if you if you can go and visit, uh, you know. It would be absolutely fascinating. A couple of those I have visited in, in Mexico with, this, with the um, step pyramids. So, yeah, um, it's it's mind blowing. So, <laughs> and as I said, guys, I kind of skimmed over it a little bit in some places, but it just gives you a roundup of that book and a little bit of a background story of von Daniken and where this book has left us as a, as a legacy and. There are some subjects in this book which, which I will get into, one of them being the Crystal Skull, which I mentioned as a previous episode before this one. I'm sure I'll get into Stonehenge and the Pyramids, and also I forgot to talk about Atlantis as well. So you can see how many branches or avenues this goes down into the mystery world, so it certainly deserves its place on that platform. So uh, there you go, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, so before I wrap up the show guys, let's tell you what I'm doing next. I'm going to be taking a look at uh, Nostradamus and his prophecies. So that's going to be my next episode to look out for. And as always, a little bit of admin for the show. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows. One of those other shows being uh, Bite Size Cinema, where I do movie reviews, so go and check that out. Uh, you can also find the Mystery Vault podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube and several other players if you type in the Mystery Vault podcast onto Google. I've also got a Facebook page, so that's where you can contact me, um, put any suggestions, any mysteries, anything like that, or put any comments on there. Um, and that is it, guys. So, as always, keep it spooky, keep it safe, keep it mysterious, all that stuff. Keep watching the skies, and I'll see you soon. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. Ghost, ghost, ghost story. Because one of you, sitting here in this room, is a well. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.